I am eating nice cream for breakfast here. I think it's about 11 a.m. I just made nice cream for the kids and myself for breakfast because this is whole food here. This is banana nice cream and chocolate sauce and nuts. And you can see how creamy and smooth and delicious that is. Mmm. Taking a bite. The kids love it. And I don't mind feeding it to them for breakfast because it is 100% bananas. And we do mangoes too. We put bananas and mangoes through there. And it's so thick and creamy and rich. And we make the chocolate sauce out of raw cacao and a couple dates and uh, salt and hemp seeds for the creaminess. So it's like this milky chocolate sauce on there. It's just absolutely delicious. But yeah, it's the only ice cream I would serve my kids for breakfast because it's 100% whole food. So yeah, here I am eating my ice cream. It's nice because it doesn't harm any animals when you make it. The dairy industry is factory farming. It's brutal. It's brutality against uh, the cows. And even the dairy farmers and people who justify it and say, oh no, these cows are treated well. No, the cows are enslaved by humanity for their milk and that's exploitation and slavery. No matter how you slice it, we haven't abolished slavery from this planet. Um, slavery of humans, slavery of animals. We just seem to love slavery. So we need to take responsibility for that. That includes all of our yummy ice cream that we think is harmless. We'd like to tell ourselves it's harmless. Well, an ice cream made from bananas is harmless and delicious. <clears throat> as long as there are slaughterhouses, there will be battlefields. You know, which basically is saying as long as as long as we enslave and kill animals for food, we will enslave and, en and kill each other because it's the enslave and kill mentality. You know, no difference between the animals and us. I mean, we're all relatives. We're all related through our DNA. We all are sentient beings and we all have consciousness and feelings and families. There's a squirrel up above my head right now. He comes around here because I grow these sunflower sprouts over here and he gets into the bag. The bag's all torn up because he gets in there and I'll come out and I'll see him munching on the sunflower seeds, but I don't stop him, you know, because the sunflower seeds are cheap. I buy them in these huge bulk bags from the hardware store, like 20 pound bags or whatever. So there's plenty for the, for the squirrel. I'd like to see slavery abolished on planet Earth. Who wouldn't? I think, I think poverty is the same as slavery. I think that as long as we have slavery, we will have poverty. That scarcity mindset that, that there isn't enough, it somehow is steeped in like a deep self-worth issue where humanity's like deeply, deeply wounded. And we just let, we just hurt each other. We just hurt every other living creature on the planet. We hurt ourselves ultimately. And um, 
what is it that's going to stop that? What are what do we need to do? Who do we need to be to change that reality so we can stop poverty and slavery and and war on this planet? What is it? Do we need to ask ourselves the hard question? What is it going to actually change it? I actually ask myself every day that question because I, I pretty much can't stand the way humanity runs our civilization. It bothers me immensely. It has since I was four years old. I, I think I remember the first time I kind of like felt despair around the way things are. I think I was pretty young, pretty young. And by the time I got to be a teenager, emerging young man, looking out on the world, I think I got um, pretty discouraged, you know. I got, I think I got pretty upset by it. And uh, one of the ways that I internalized that pain and that despair for the way humanity is, was to uh, take some responsibility for my life. I went vegan vegetarian at, at 17 and denounced meat, dairy, and eggs. The factory farming, the slavery, the exploitation, I just said no. And I read a book called Diet for a New America by John Robbins. Highly recommend that book. That book changed my life. You can't read a book like Diet for a New America and not be aware of the statistics of, of animal agriculture on planet Earth. I mean, it would just be like essential class 101 on how things work and how to things how to behave everybody needs to read diet for a new america by john robbins So nice cream. Nice cream is a diet for a new America, that's for sure. But why don't we be nice for a change? Why don't we be nice to each other and the animals? We could use a little more niceness. And you know where that starts? You know where niceness starts? Niceness starts right here with ourselves. If I'm not nice to myself, how am I going to be nice to others? Veganism, being vegan is an act of kindness first and foremost toward yourself. It's not taking death, slaughterhouses, and battlefields into your body. It's not taking the poverty consciousness into your body. It's not taking slavery and scarcity into your body. If you embody scarcity, slavery, poverty, you're going to act in scarcity and in slavery and in poverty. Impoverished minds create impoverished realities. Scarcity creates lack. It's all tied together. We got to start with ourselves. Acts of kindness toward ourselves means not taking death, decay, and putrefaction into our body with meat, dairy, and eggs. And then you want to get really nice to yourself. Then you start taking out the cooked food. I've never had a relationship with nonviolence until I went raw vegan. I have heard the word nonviolence related to Martin Luther King Jr. and the civil rights movement and, you know, Gandhi and all this, but I never had a relationship with nonviolence. Didn't really know what it meant, but. When I went raw, I started to feel it over time, not right away, not right away, over time, over time, I started to feel, wow, this is an act of nonviolence, not taking 
destroyed food into my body as an act of kindness toward myself. It actually is completely uh, phenomenal. I had no idea, no idea that would happen. Non-violence. So nice cream is 100% raw food. This is raw food. We've got raw bananas frozen with raw dates, raw cacao, raw walnuts. This is non-violence. I'll tell you, it feels good. It feels really good to be non-violent toward oneself. I'm, I'm discovering that it might be the best feeling I've ever um, discovered in my life. I'm on this path and I'm not getting off. There's no getting off. I'm, I'm just getting started. I'm just getting started on my relationship with nonviolence and how I can eradicate poverty and slavery and war from my consciousness. So I'm not participating with that. Therefore, I've abolished it out of my spirit. You know, therefore, I'm contributing. I'm contributing to the humanity, our species, and our society, and our civilization just by being nonviolent, just by taking the consciousness out of myself. That's a huge contribution. We can all contribute exactly like that. It starts with going vegan, and it starts with eating more raw food. I'm a firm believer that there's no way we can, humanity can evolve to be nonviolent and still eat meat. If there are slaughterhouses, there will be battlefields. We need to take responsibility for that. And it starts right here. So I'm a supporter of veganism. I'm a supporter of raw food. I'm a supporter of moving the needle one step further on the scale of evolution. That's, that's me, that's my mission, that's what I'm here to do. And I have my entire life. So make some nice cream. It's the best thing you'll ever have for a frozen raw treat. And I um, support all of you on your journey. If you like what I'm talking about in this video, please subscribe. Because this is what I talk about. And give it a thumbs up. And I will see you in the next one.